Hey there friends, thanks for checking in. When we carry a gun every day, it's very important that we understand the concept of avoidance. Avoiding a situation that could get out of hand, avoiding a situation that could get us uh, prosecuted in the courts, persecuted by the media, and where we regret our actions, you know, is it best to avoid it? Should we de-escalate this situation and get out of there before it gets out of control and both parties have regrets or somebody gets hurt? Well, here we see a situation in Adeline, Texas. It actually happened September 1st. There's a lot of media covering this now because it's, it's created a situation where one man got killed and two others got charged. It all had to do with a mattress, a mattress that was being thrown away at a dump. These people are neighbors, and the mattress was in the dump, then it was out of the dump on their property, then back in the dump, and they meet each other outside by the dumpster. And we have an older man named Miller, who has a handgun at his side, and we have a younger and much larger man named Aaron Howard. He is verbally upset. Now, they are doing a lot of talking back and forth. Meanwhile, in the background with the, of the old man is his kid, 37-year-old Michael Miller, who has a shotgun over his shoulder. So here we have two armed people uh, in a verbal dispute with a younger neighbor who is very upset. Death threats are made on both sides. Here we have Howard who's saying, you pulled the gun in front of my kids. Go ahead and pull that gun on me. Point that gun. I'm going to kill you. Point that gun. And then we have the old man saying, if you come within three feet of me, you're going to die. I will kill you. Either of these parties could have backed up, walked away and said, I am done with this. I'm not, I'm done. I'm, I'm sitting at this one out. I will uh, think about this and talk to you later or whatever the case. But that doesn't happen. This gets out of control. Shots were fired. Let's take a look at this and we'll come back and talk more about it. If you got closer to me, I'm going to kill you. Hey, did you hear him say he's gonna kill me? Yes. I'm at the dumpster. Put the gun up and go inside. You pulled a gun in front you of our children. You pulled a gun in front of my kids. Go on, Point at me. Take these wings. I'm standing my ground. Oh, kid, you're dead. I promise you, you're both dead. Ah, I it. it is an alley. You are in an alley. I'm gonna kill you. I doubt it. Bet. First of all, if you're gonna show this video to the cops, you might want to stop yelling. Oh no! I don't give a Back off! You pull that gun one more time, Lefer, I'll take it, I'll put a bullet through your head. No, you won't. Bet. Point it at me. Take a swing. Point it at me. Go ahead. Point it at me. Thank you, swing. Point it at me. Back off. Point it at me again. Back off. Point it at me again. Back off. You're a dead man. I doubt it. If you, come, if you come within three foot of me, I'm gonna kill you. Okay. You're not gonna shoot my husband. Well, Shoot me! You're dead. Point it. Point it. It is clear that each man had a right to stand their ground. Each man had a right to say what they wanted to say. But we have to ask ourselves, even though it is our right, is it right? Would it be better to walk away? get out of this situation you know just just walk away keep your eye on that guy then when it's safe turn around and get out of there and I think each party would agree that that would have been the best scenario but Miller had a gun and it, the the video is a bit sketchy but he ended up drawing his drawing his gun from his side that was unholstered and firing on Howard he may have a chance in court. I'm no lawyer, but I think that he could argue that, you know, he, he gave verbal commands, if you invade my space, I will kill you. And ultimately, that's what happened. But it probably was not the handgun shots that killed Howard. Right behind him was his son. At that point, once shots were fired, he took a couple shots from his shotgun, which I believe were the fatal shots taken. Was the kid's life in danger? But it was the younger kid who fired that shotgun, which I think were the fatal shots that killed Howard. And in that case, he's gonna to have to justify if his life was in danger at that point. Because we know if we have to use our firearm for self-defense, that we can use it until the threat is eliminated. You cannot go above and beyond that point. Whether we agree with that or not, the law clearly states in most cases that you can use your firearm if you can justify your life was in danger and you use just enough force to eliminate the threat. 
Nobody wants death threats against them. Nobody wants to be shot. Nobody that I know wants to shoot somebody else. Okay, nobody wants to be in court defending yourself. Nobody wants to be in prison. Knowing that, avoiding the situation, if you see it getting out of hand, is always a good thing. It's smart, it's intelligent to understand the scenario and say, I I'm done with this, goodbye, before this gets out of hand. Because when it doesn't, something like this happens, somebody ends up dead, somebody else is facing life in prison, and nobody wins. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate the thumbs up button. Thanks for watching, and you guys be safe.